All right, what's up, everybody? It is Thursday, March 20th, 2014. You're tuned into the 404 show on CNET.com. My name is Justin Yu. I'm Bridget Carey. I'm Ariel Nunez. What's up, everybody? It's the first day of spring. You can tell by my really bright sweater. Yeah. I am so ready for winter to be over. <laughs> I know. You're electric right now. So for people that are listening to the podcast, you are wearing the most electrically charged pink sweater I've ever seen. With a, with a bright blue underneath shirt. Yeah. Yes. We had to I'm recalibrate just... the cameras just to point at <laughs> you. You're super bright right now, but I love that. Thank you. Is Thank it really you. the first day of spring? It today? is. It uh, is. Uh, at, at 12, 5, 47 Eastern time. Who comes up with the minute that it turns spring? That's, this is <laughs> like ridiculous. Just pick a day, people. Like, yeah. like oh, exactly at this minute, it is now spring. Like, <laughs> I, I think that's always silly. But they, they figure it out, I guess. They figure yeah. it out the minute. And it's kind of working right now, too. I came to work and it was beautiful outside, so I'm oh, not complaining. Yeah, it wasn't too bad. It's not it's not my ideal temperature just yet. I still I still am in my, my old, reliable, super puffy coat phase. Yeah, like, it's hard to shed those layers. Yeah, so we'll see. We'll see. Is it any coincidence that the weather just got super nice the day that Jeff Bacalar leaves New York City? <laughs> the sun was out I don't today, know. I will say. That is very strange. I'm not correlating those two, but it is a weird coincidence. Jeff's not here, obviously. Thanks for filling in, Bridget. But uh, Jeff is on his way. I think he's on the plane right now to Las Vegas for a bachelor party. Nice. Yeah, so... Nothing good comes of that. Yeah. Or, or a lot of good comes of it. I don't know. So you're probably not going to hear a report on what went on when he comes back. <laughs> but regardless, you'll be here today and hopefully tomorrow mm -hmm. to round out the week of shows. And then Jeff will be back Monday. Mm -hmm. So I appreciate you filling in. Yeah. You know how much we love you here on the show. Yeah, no, it's, a, it's an exciting day. I, I don't know what... What uh, you've been uh, uh, seen on the interweb interwebs today, but uh, have you checked out your first tweet? It's kind of like taking over Twitter right now. There's a way to check out your first tweet that oh, Twitter man. made a page to make it really easy to look up. I mean, you could always look up your history of tweets, but uh -huh. just before I came oh, on the show, idea, yeah. everyone's like, like bragging about what their first tweet was, oh, and, no. and it's it, it, it's it's kind of funny going back. And now people are favoriting. My first tweet ever since I shared it, uh -huh. and I'm wondering if that like affects the space time continuum of like oh <laughs> it was back God. in 2008. It wasn't my proudest moment. I think <laughs> everyone on Twitter with their first tweet was like, "What is Twitter?" <laughs> <laughs> and that goes to show you that people maybe who get on it never do understand Twitter when they join it. Yeah, <laughs> I saw yours. Yeah, I, well, you're stalking me. I, I just looked mine up and I said, "Oh God," which that is really it. funny. <laughs> oh God, because this is before I actually looked it up. And if you go to discover.twitter.com slash first dash tweet, you can look yours up. Here's mine. Oh, God. <laughs> that was the first thing that I said. I think, I think mine was something like... Um, so crazy. was uh, finally uh, becoming a twit. <laughs> finally becoming a twit. Something, so something on that behalf. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> Here's yours, Ariel. Let me see. You say it. Chillin'. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's hilarious. I like how everyone's is so short. Yeah. Now we actually need things to be broken up into multiple tweets to say our complete thoughts. But before, it was so much simpler back then. I know, and it was all just, just you know, quick little phrases. It's very funny. Yeah, it's that's very funny. funny. Let's look up Jeff Bacalar's. His is, I'm watching Project Runway because Stacy is a remote control Nazi. <laughs> that was the first hello to the Twitter world. His first tweet contains the word Nazi. That is so appropriate for Jeff's personality. Wow. Makes sense. It's very, very revealing. I love that. That's so cool. And I, I, I wanted to um, share... Um, so we're making jokes on Twitter about like, okay, like what, it, what does it mean when you favorite your first tweet, space time uh -huh. continuum made me start thinking about back to the future and the two Jennifers and how like, oh, well, your old Twitter can't meet your young Twitter. And so then I find the picture of the two Jennifers and I notice old Jennifer in the split second that, that they do the faint. She's wearing, I'm old. she's wearing a smartwatch. No way. She's wearing this crazy pink, like, control buttoned smartwatch. What? She's like, oh, oh. And I'm like, <laughs> yeah, I'm, like I'm like, this is amazing. <laughs> no way. Did you post that on Twitter? Yeah, I gotta, you, I gotta you, you can find up. it on my Twitter account, yeah. That's amazing. 
I'm also just thinking about Back to the Future because I'm going to the Enchantment Under the Sea dance on Saturday. Wait a minute. So you and I talked about this I'm yesterday. Very and you weren't planning on going. No, no. I well, and now you're no, going? No, no, I was. I was. You're just not listening. I was obsessed <laughs> about going. I'm very excited. Oh, oh no. You were saying that you didn't You didn't buy the dress. That yeah, I didn't wearing. buy the dress because well, that Lorraine had because they have actual – people make – you know, costumes out of actual movie co- <laughs> outfits all the time, but that was like three hundred dollars to like get a special Lorraine made you know dress, and so I just went and got a fifties themed dress. But it's going to be interesting. They had a whole story about it, I think, in the Times, where like people are spending a lot of money recreating all the character okay, outfits. Okay, wait, wait, wait. But before we get into this, let's back up and explain. Sorry, what I'm we're getting, I'm about a little here. hyper about it. So yeah, let's back up. So in the movie Back to the Future with Michael J. Fox. They go to a dance in the past, which is in the 50s. Because if they don't dance, they don't kiss. And if they don't kiss, they don't fall in love. And if they don't fall in love, they can't have the kids. Exactly. So uh, they visit this dance multiple times. And it's where Michael J. Fox plays Johnny B. Good. Mm -hmm. And it's all 50s themed. And it's called the Enchantment Under the Sea Dance. And so is it an anniversary thing? Is that why they're celebrating this? There is a company that that recreates movie scenes. And this company said, you know what? Let's do the Enchantment Under the Sea Dance. (laughs) And it benefits. It's the Michael J. Fox Foundation, but in the past, they have also recreated the, uh, scenes from, from the Ninja Turtles where, where all those, um, I guess- All the thugs you, underground. Exactly, the underground skateboarding yeah. thugs, and everyone who went in had to wear like a red bandana to right. like symbolize that they were part of the gang. And they're like the trading gang. cigarettes and stuff for Walkmans. <laughs> so, so, so everyone yeah. who buys a ticket to this has to dress up like you're going to the prom, but yeah. around us will be people who, who went a step further and actually have the outfit of Biff and and everyone involved and so that'll be pretty cool right but not everybody can be a main character otherwise that well i'm sure fun. people who who i mean you you pay enough i'm sure you want to probably bring your 3d glasses and try to look as much as you can like <laughs> yeah. a character but i have a feeling that there'll be people you know who who take it you know to the perfect step you know so, so 50s themed for women i'm thinking poodle skirts and ribbons in your hair well more like really tight here and then it oh, poops out my. so poodle <laughs> skirt is kind of like you know going to the soda shop right but if you're going to your high school prom you know you're not you're gonna right. you know wear anything that just looks nice i mean in in the movie his his mom had a pink dress that was like heart shaped but yeah had to go hunt for something online because i couldn't find anything here but right. like you know hugs you and then poops right out gotta get like poofy material yeah and then you gotta wear flats with the socks showing too that's a very once again you're thinking about a sock hop no is this too (laughs) casual yeah yeah, a little little, we'll see (laughs) i get a little uh, i was a little obsessed because yeah you you (laughs) you could wear like something like like a mom baking cookies but you wouldn't wear that right you wouldn't wear that to a school dance dance. and a high school kid has to be fairly trendy too well you're really giving this a lot of thought and that's why i'm very excited i'm very excited i always wanted to host my own like back to the future party in 2015 when the anniversary happened Happens, and uh, uh, so I'm, I'm. I'll look to them That's for so ideas. Genius. Yeah. They better have like some kind of doo wop group or. There rock is. And roll group there, there, there is a group that that does that. Um, you can actually. They're a modern group that does t- takes on modern songs, but in an old school style, and. I donated ten dollars to save the clock tower on top of my ticket, and I don't know what that gives me, but apparently yeah. it gives me something. So I will let you know what I get for saving the clock tower <laughs> donation. People just start disappearing halfway yeah. through the dance. <laughs> You're so silly. So when is that happening? Saturday. I mean, and it's it's actually going on Saturday and Sunday in New York City. Mm-hmm. So um, I, I hope other cities get to like get inspired and do the same thing. I think yeah. it's fantastic. It better be and in a high school charity, gymnasium, too. right? It's got to be. I don't know. I don't think it's at a gymnasium, but I think they're just recreating the, a space to look like it, yeah. Okay, well, go follow Bridget on Instagram because you'll probably be posting oh, yeah. photos. Oh, yeah. Is it just Bridget Carey? I'm going to filter that up, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Actually, it's uh, Instagram Bridget Happens because Bridget Carey was taken. So. Gotcha, okay. And then go follow Bridget at Bridget Carey on Twitter as well. Yeah, I'll share it all in there. So for today's show, uh, this is what we're going to be talking about. Um, we've got a shorter show for you guys today. I want to start by talking about breakfast. Okay. And uh, I'm not even going to reveal what the subject is. I'm glad is. we're talking about food, Justin. Duh. Because that's all we do when I'm on the show. You know, I love to cater <laughs> these episodes to cater. you. Cater. <laughs> like food. <laughs> 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 you silly. And then we're going to talk about um, an app that basically lets you avoid people. It's an antisocial app. Kind okay. of sad. But we'll get to that. And then we'll talk about how to get revenge on someone who doesn't follow through with an internet sale, whether Mm. that's eBay or Amazon. Whenever you buy something online, if someone doesn't follow through on their seller side, you can get revenge, and I'll tell you how. All right. And then if we have time, we'll have a few other stories as well. But let's get to the first one of the day. 
Let's get you hungry. Okay. Have you eaten breakfast yet, Bridget Carey? Yeah, I had four slices of... <laughs> Of, um, oh God! This is gonna be bad. <laughs> Four slices of anything for breakfast is <laughs> not the right thing. Of the, the raisin swirl bread, you know, the cinnamon raisin swirl bread. See, every day this week, I, I've, I've had, I've had egos and coffee, and then I had donuts on Wednesday, and then today I just had four slices of bread. But I'm, I'm a carb girl. I'm a carb and sweet breakfast. I like my sweet breakfast over my savory breakfast. You know, people that are listening to this show that don't know what you look like probably assume that you are morbidly obese <laughs> just based on the descriptions, the food that you eat Have every you day. Have you heard about the thing like called skinny fat? I don't approve of the term, but it's a yeah. trending term about like just people who just happen to be really out of shape this and probably like going to have a heart attack any second, but happen to just not have a lot of excess weight. And so like really, Lawrence. I have no muscle mass at all. It's just, it's just sh shapely fat. No, but you are... <laughs> Come on. <laughs> well, Short of getting body calipers in here, you are super skinny. And I don't know how you do that because I have the same phenomenon. So you and I are probably getting hated on hardcore right now. But that's fine because we're just lucky and you can't blame nature for that. <laughs> and I'm going to pass out after like one flight of stairs. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Jeans. Thank you. And it's going to catch up with us. Hello, adult oh, yeah. onset diabetes. Oh, yeah. It's real. So that's going to happen. In the meantime, let's just enjoy ourselves. <laughs> so what about breakfast? That so I <laughs> <laughs> this is actually going to come full circle because yesterday, or I think it was two days ago, actually, we were talking about Taco Bell because... Ariel actually used to work there yeah. way back when he was in high school, yeah. 1974. Was it just a Taco Bell or was it Taco Bell KFC, like a Taco Hut, like a Taco Pizza Hut? Oh, uh, that no. was before they did that. Oh. It was just Taco Bell, yeah. So uh, Peony was listening to the episode where you were talking about that. Uh -huh. And uh, she said that she was laughing really hard because you said you worked there like in 1994 or something. Oh, it was 95, I think. 95, yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. And she said that was the year she came to America. <laughs> <laughs> Peony's 25. And she was like, I was laughing so hard because I was like seven years old. Yeah, totally. And I was immigrating to America, but you were probably working I was, in the Taco I was Bell. working. Well, which is a very American job. <laughs> yeah. It's entirely possible that her family went into your Taco Bell. It possibly, you man. <laughs> yeah. You fried probably up her Seven layer burrito. Oh, those little cinnamon <laughs> girl things. Aww. So good. <laughs> uh, it's hilarious. Yeah. <laughs> How long did you work there for? I was only there for like six months or something like that. Can you eat it now? Yeah, I'll we still have a Taco eat Bell it. Near the, no, we have a Taco Bell near the office, and I wonder if you like ever go. Mm, I could use a gordita. I never That's go. True. I never go around the office. Like. It hasn't happened in a while, but it just has to be one of those nights where I'm just out late, maybe been drinking or something. It's only a 4 a.m. food, yeah. yeah. Yeah, totally. So you were the mid-90s. That was uh, the Taco Bell dog days, right? Yeah, totally. Yo quiero Taco mm -hmm. Bell. No <laughs> wonder you hate Chihuahuas. <laughs> yeah, it's so sense. true. It's yeah. so true. <laughs> That's why you hate Chihuahuas, man. Yeah, fast forward, and now I have a Chihuahua. <laughs> it's so oh my yeah. gosh. That's the most ironic <laughs> I've ever heard. It's crazy. What was his name? Is it, did, the, did the mascot have a name? I, I don't know. It was just the Yo Quiero Taco Bell. Yeah. Dog. I had a stuffed version of him, and he squeezed him. He said, Yo Quiero Taco Bell. <laughs> 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 it was so big. Oh, God. Really bad. Well, obviously, based on that, Taco Bell is no stranger to weird marketing techniques. And it's worked for them for the past decade or so. Mm -hmm. But have you heard about Taco Bell breakfast? I've heard this buzzing around. I like some sort of breakfast taco, I guess. So it's yeah. just breakfast shaped in a taco. So I want to bring up some photos of the Taco Bell breakfast foods because... They, they just unveiled it, uh, I think it's today. Oh, no, I'm sorry, a week from today. Okay. The 27th is when Taco Bell breakfast will come nationwide. But um, it's really ridiculous. Have you seen any of the stuff that they're going to be coming out with? The first thing is waffle tacos. So this could, <laughs> is basically the answer, uh, Taco Bell's answer to the McGriddle. And uh, the McGriddle is basically, I'm sorry, the waffle tacos are sausage, eggs, melted cheese in a soft waffle shell. Oh, no. And then just to give <laughs> you a little extra disease, they put syrup on top. I am uh, not a fan of the sweet and savory combo. You keep those things separate. No way. I do not need syrup on my meat. No sweet meat. Are you I, serious? I, I can't do the sweet meat. Like, I like sweet. Have you tried it? And I like meat. I, I, I just, I need to separate it on my plate. I just okay. can't do it. That's fair enough. Well, you can get the syrup on the side. Do they have anything that isn't sweet and savory? No, no, no. Everything America. is designed to give you a sugar high. America. Look, this is the next big thing. Well, the AM Crunch Wrap, that's not that crazy. But this, well, Taco actually, Bell has AM partnered with Cinnabon. Oh, geez. Well, so does Burger King. 
Really? Oh, Cinnabon is everywhere. It is the one brand. Here's a little factoid. You can look this up. Yeah. It is the one brand <laughs> that has more marketing in like side products than yeah. any other brand Food ever. Slugs. There is Cinnabon frosting you could buy. Cinnabon cereal. Cinnabon. Really? Cinnabon like probably fabric softener smell. I don't know, but like oh. there's candles. There's everything. And so you see this actually more places than you realize. But it's I'm not so surprised to see depressing. this. That, that, that really it. Didn't they always have the little twisties? They're they're just yeah, taking they Cinnabon that. to a branded level now. Right. So they partnered with Cinnabon to come out with the Cinnabon Delights, which are basically donut holes made out of Cinnabon, but then they inject them with frosting. <laughs> <laughs> it's insane and really, really sweet. What's in the crunch wrap? The crunch wrap is basically just sausage, steak, or bacon, and a hash brown patty tucked into a folded tortilla. See, they, they took out the sweet. I do that. Ugh. It's a little heavy, though. It's a little big. But get this. So th in a week, they'll be coming out with all these items on their breakfast menu. But to promote those breakfast items, they've come out with their latest marketing strategy. And we just found out what that is because yesterday, a bunch of people on the internet started posting photos of, get this, a Taco Bell phone. Mm -hmm. A select group of individuals, I think it was a 1,000 to be exact, received this, which is a phone. It's a Samsung prepaid phone. Like an old school phone. Old with, school like, phone. Like a, like a candy bar with uh, buttons. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so it's not a smartphone, no touch screen. It's one of these prepaid burner phones, basically. A thousand people got this phone with instructions saying to never turn it off. And the idea is, is that they're hoping to turn this viral, which is why they send it out to, like, quote, influencers on the internet. They're saying that the phones, when you keep it on you, it's prepaid and it's going to ring at any moment. At any random time, they will call you on this phone with a personal mission, spelling out things you can do online and in person. It's basically a scavenger hunt. Hmm. And um, I'm a little hurt that neither you nor I, based on our let's, collective let's, histories, let's, you know, put that aside selected. for now and be journalists. <laughs> keep, keep going. We can be, yeah, you know? we can be agnostic about this, but I'm still a little upset. <laughs> and, you know, based on these scavenger hunts, uh, if you win, you'll be awarded prizes and things like that. And, of course, they're going to have to... I think the first mission was to post it on as many social networks as possible because a lot of people on Reddit, on Facebook and Twitter all posted about this. Well, I see the little flaw in this plan. What's that? Folks who like Taco Bell aren't really go-getters and really want to run around town. <laughs> that is true. <laughs> so I'm not the kind of person. Like, if, if, if I'm going across the street for Taco Bell because it's the easiest meal right there, am I really going to want to? So I have to go to the park and run around. <laughs> I mean, yeah. But I hope it works out for them. I'll be interested to see what yeah. I guess they will do for like a free gordita. That's so funny. <laughs> yeah, eat all this food and then move. Really good idea, Taco Bell. But live moss, I guess. That's going to be the next thing. So if you want to go to Taco Bell, you could actually walk not even half a block to get to the nearest one next to this office. There's that one with Dunkin' Donuts, which I went to this morning, actually. It's, it's a sad day when I go there for breakfast and lunch because it's Dunkin' and Taco Bell in one. Yeah. <laughs> That's not always my, my, my proudest moments. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. I remember, so my mom, right, in true Asian mom fashion, she used to have a whole drawer in our house. In the kitchen. Oh, of the sauces. Dedicated to different sauces. Mm, every mama does. Did you have that too? Is that not every just an Asian mama. mom thing? No, it's a it's a mom who like grew up knowing that like things cost money, trying to save money, True. you know, and th that sauce, you never know when you need the sauce. Yeah. You never know. <laughs> yeah, I would always go digging around for sauces in there anytime we would make food, like taquitos or something yeah. like that. But I remember <laughs> so in high school, I opened the box, or I opened the drawer, and you could see generations of packets because she had <laughs> kept them around for so long. Like the design changes. Yeah, there were design <laughs> evolutions of the packets. Like you would see the one, oh, this one has like a bell on it. And here's where they introduced picante sauce. <laughs> there was so many in there. And it wasn't just Taco Bell either. It was collected from like Del Tacos and the Carl's Juniors of the world as well. But I'm glad to know that my mom wasn't the only one. My mom hoards Arby sauce because you used to be able to buy that at the store when she was a kid yeah. and you can't. So we go to Arby's. It's like, please give me as many sauces as you can. <laughs> yeah. This girl would like handful dunk it in the drive through Yeah, yeah. And so that, that was what we had in our house, Arby's Well, because they sell that sauce now. Like I think they sell Carl's Jr. barbecue sauce in the store. But that's free. Just ask for extra sauce. Hello. Yeah. You, you, you got you to gotta take it when it's free. Take, so take the free things of life, yeah. you know, when they come. <laughs> Same thing my mom Saber. does the same thing but with napkins as well does uh, your mom do that eh, 
No, I, I guess I guess when they're there, we save them. You yeah. know, in the napkin holder, they they get added to the mix. You know, well, but we don't ask for like really holder. more. No, so moms, you always know if someone's a mom because of how much they stuff into their purse. <laughs> because of you crazy kids, you know, you never know what's gonna happen. <laughs> yeah. So it's funny. You go to the store or, or you go out to eat, and you always see a mom who's like, just just in case, yeah. just in case. So many just napkins. Just in case. Yeah. <laughs> everywhere in the car dashboard, glove compartment, yeah. pocket. Yeah, it's more Oof. about the travel needs. Yeah. Well, you know you're an adult when you have to when you get rid of those Chipotle napkins and things like that. Just upgrade to the cloth napkins. <laughs> so uh, if you're not hungry enough, that's the Taco Bell story of the day. That's the only food story. Okay. You could be thankful. Um, let's talk about Cloak. This is the anti-social network app that we discussed earlier in the show. Hmm. So do you have people in your life? I'm going to ask both of you guys this. You don't have to name names, but do you got people in your life that you sort of want to avoid? Yes. Yes. Um, and are they all exes? Let's just get they, this out no, here. It's no, all exes. No. Right? No. No. Yeah. Um, <laughs> no. Just sometimes friendships go real bad. Yeah. And 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 you realize you you've evolved into a new stage of your life, mm -hmm. and that was good for then. That is not good for now. Right. But I've defriended those people. You know. I mean, there's a, I keep them in my phone in case they ever get crazy and call me, and I'll won't get surprised by mm -hmm. the phone call. Yeah. But um, yeah, I've deleted them from Facebook because I don't want to you know, come across them in my feed or yeah. whatever, you know? You know what? I always see people, and this happened more in San Francisco because it was obviously a smaller town, mm -hmm. but I would always see people that I kind of knew, but not enough to actually have a sustained conversation with. And sometimes, like, have you guys ever done this? Like, you'll be walking on the street and you'll see somebody, like, across the street, but, or walking toward you on the same side. And because you don't want to talk to them, do you ever cross the street just to avoid them? <laughs> or this always happens to me too. Like uh, I'll be walking and I'll see someone I know and immediately have their reaction to say hi, but then I'll notice they don't see me. So I'll just look back down and pretend I didn't see them and just we'll walk by each other. Does that yeah, I, I keep my head down at all times and I'm just like, don't look at me. Actually, I, I had a I had a weird moment in the grocery store where um, there was a a landlord of a temporary place. When I first moved to New York, I got a place on Craigslist. This lady was renting out her her house. Yeah, wasn't a big fan of of of, of her craziness. Uh -huh. But so I got out in two months. But then like I saw the grocery store. I'm like, I gotta go. I gotta go. And I was with my guy and he's like what what is it bridget what I'm like, just a dog. It's like, because it always happens when you're with someone you're like trying to tell them like quietly we gotta get to the other aisle We're yeah out. i have right. no time to explain but you must believe and trust in me and they're like what <laughs> i didn't hear you stop whispering yeah bridget. what did you say bridget <laughs> who lives at blah 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 <laughs> so awkward yeah. what are you gonna do right right now there's actually something you can do <laughs> Um, there's something called Cloak, which is an app that you can download, and it basically uses public location data that it gleans from places like Foursquare and Instagram to basically tell you where your friends are. And it's funny because if they were really your friends, you wouldn't be friends with them on social networks, but we all have those people, those acquaintances that mm -hmm. we don't really want to talk to. So you can actually... This tells you, Cloak tells you where they are at any given moment and will actually send you an alert through the app using the GPS in your phone to let you know that they're getting near I guess, and that you should maybe choose a different route to work. I mean, you're assuming that they have their GPS on and that they're using some other program because they don't all have Cloak. Right. So, so they're... they're Broadcasting so if they've ever that, checked that, in to Foursquare or yeah. maybe geotagged themselves on an Instagram photo, yeah. that's the only thing. Just one time and then you know you can track them using this app. Hmm. Yeah, that's uh, it's kind of sad that we've got to the point where we're sharing our location so much. We need something to protect us from all that location right. sharing and maybe help us not go into that store, not go into that restaurant. Right, exactly. And... I also feel like the first thing that came to my mind when I read about this was, this is a really easy way for you to also stalk people. Mm, oh, yeah. If you wanted to use it the other way, I mean, you can use the information where they are however you please, you know, whether That's to true. avoid them or to look at them when they don't know you're around. That's super creepy, right? This whole thing is 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 odd. If you, if you really are that scared of people, you have other issues we got to work on, you yeah. know, we'll, we'll have to talk it out. Yeah. <laughs> It's so weird. It's so weird. But you're right. It's just another stalker tool in disguise, but it gets better press because it's like, oh, run away from people. No, right. No, it's just, no, it's another stalker tool Pretty in disguise. Much yeah. I like your point there. I always get into this situation where I always have headphones in my ears when I'm walking around the city, right? And it's always really awkward when everybody is in a rush in New York mm -hmm. and you see somebody and you don't know whether or not you're just going to say hi and keep walking 
or you have to stop and talk. There are some people that you just don't know well enough to be like, okay, we're definitely going to stop and talk. Do you know what I mean? Like, do you I have people I don't, like I that have, in your I life? I have no friends. We were so. like, oh, are we going to, do you know what I'm talking about, Ariel? Is yeah, no, I know exactly what you're talking about. We were yeah. just like, You guys are oh, so popular. Like, you just meet strangers on the subway. Yeah. What is just up like, with hey, this? Hey, okay, bye. And then like keep walking to whatever your destination is. So weird. Like that happened with uh, Ty Pendleberry from CNET the other day. Like I saw him on Canal, but I was in a rush. Mm -hmm. And I could tell he was like, hey, what are you up to? But then I had to keep walking. And it was kind okay, of I, I think technology is hurting our social skills. You're allowed to keep walking and say, hey, I'm going somewhere. You don't have to be afraid of not having a full conversation. I know, I know. But what if they have this eagerness in their eye and then they want to talk to you? They probably like, don't. Hey, <laughs> no one wants to talk to anybody is your point. No, yeah. <laughs> you know, we're all in the same boat. It's acknowledge and move on. I got it. It's great seeing you. Bye. <laughs> yeah. Bye. Hope to run into you never. Yeah. So that's Cloak. If you want to go and download it, you can get it for iOS right now. If it gets popular and I don't know, backed by some venture capitalists, maybe it'll come to Android, but only iOS for now. Usually those things are Android first when they're a little odd. Yeah. I'm surprised. Um, all right. Let's talk about this story. And we actually didn't preview this in the beginning of the show, but this sort of affects you and me. Okay. Um, did you hear on Monday there was an earthquake in Los Angeles? Yes. And, and that there were folks, I mean, it went viral with some news anchors were, were reacting to it yes. be, because they were live on air early in the morning. Yeah. When that when that earthquake hit, which yeah. is actually kind of scary with all the lights above us, like it you, was kind of you know, scary. You can imagine in any studio, you know. Yeah, that was uh, KTLA, I think. Yes. And then they panned up because it was a live broadcast, and they were yeah. like freaking out on the air. And they panned up to the lights, and you could see the lights. Shaking. I would call it, it a calm scary. freak out. Like 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 if I was in this situation, I would applaud. Like I wouldn't act like that. I'd just be running away. Like yeah. <laughs> like they're much more cool about it. Yeah, <laughs> although I don't know about you guys, uh, Ariel. Obviously, mm -hmm. you you have a lot of friends in California too, but. All my friends on social networks like Facebook and Twitter were freaking out over a 4.7 magnitude earthquake. I've never experienced an earthquake in my life. Really? So I don't know what that's like. I'm a hurricane gal. Not that's what I was going to say. Yeah. I was like, man, you think a 4.7 earthquake magnitude is bad? Try having an earth, uh, hurricane hit your city and not having power for a week. Well, that's see, really Well, see, that's how I was. And coming from Florida, going to New York, when New York had a tropical storm and everyone was like, ah! And Never. I'm like, I'm like, no one's prepared, whatever, you know. <laughs> right, right. So, yeah. Earthquakes are pretty scary, but I mean, I've been in a few bad ones and they're not that bad. Maybe because I've just gotten lucky and the foundations never shook, hmm. but um, they're, they're not the worst. What do you think, Ari? Are you, are you afraid of earthquakes? Mm, I, I was in the 89 one. I was in the Bay Area for 80, the 89 one. That was pretty scary. But yeah. besides that, every other one. Uh, nah, I got a little scared, but nothing crazy. Yeah, yeah. I've never had like anything fall on my head or anything no, like that. No, no, no. The no. problem is, is that like when you grow up in a world like Florida with with theme parks, you mm -hmm. go you go to the earthquake, the ride, and <laughs> yeah. like, so you know it's really freaking scary, you know. Right. But I don't know what it's like for for the smaller cases that yeah. aren't movie scenes, you know. <laughs> Well, I'll just be sure to shake the shit out of you after the show. And okay. You'll know what it's All right. All right. Um, so after this <laughs> earthquake hit, the LA Times was super quick to report on it. Mm -hmm. Actually, they were the first outlet to break this news. And it was reported three minutes in the paper after the fact. Wow. Just super quick. And people were sort of wondering how they were able to publish this so quickly. And the reason wasn't because they had an intern sitting at the desk blogging everything so quickly. It was actually because Los Angeles Times employs something called robot journalism. Have you heard about this? These are robots that actually print articles based on algorithms. So Los Angeles Times, one of the first newspapers to actually do this, and they've done it for a while now. Um, with sports and uh, sports articles and financial news. Hmm. But they're sort of starting to do it with breaking news, too. And this is one of the first stories that broke uh, from a robot. It's kind of interesting. So it's pulling information based on everyone going, the word earthquake, they, it, 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 yeah. it finds the, maybe the, the activity of, of the measurements of, of, of a wave. Exactly. And, and it goes, well, it, well, earthquake must have happened. So here, ba 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 ba, and then like like two three sentences, or it's it was actually a pretty fully formed article, and the, it draws 
sources, according to this uh, BBC article, from places like the U.S. Geological Survey. Hmm. I'm assuming that's where they get the magnitude rating from. And then they put that into a pre-written template and then basically collect the news around it and build an article that's actually readable to people. And then they publish it, you know, right before getting vetted by an actual person. Wow. So my question to you is, are our jobs at stake based on this new this new form of robot journalism? There will always be a need for um, some sort of deeper thought and analysis, but sure. unfortunately we are we are very, um, we don't have a big attention span, right? We yeah. just want the quick hit headlines. We don't even like sometimes click on a headline before we share it. We, yeah. A lot of people are just reading the, the summary and the headline and the picture and sharing it on Facebook without ever, ever <laughs> clicking it. And same on Twitter, they found that. So, so I think we're just kind of like, Hit it, move on, keep going, keep going. You know, right. and they scan, scan, scan. That's how we fall for 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 silly news like true. Like, you know, like people dying who didn't die, right? Um, or so, like coyotes at uh, the Olympics, right? Like yeah, a, a totally fake story that right. Jimmy Kimmel so, made. Right. So, so we are we are too fast paced, and mm -hmm. on one hand, it's good that a robot can just kind of see quickly something short. I don't think it'll ever replace though investigative reporting and right. problem is is that you know we're in an age right now where you have to make money fast because everyone's competing to be the first story out there mm -hmm. and that'll get more clicks than the one who takes five hours to really deeply report it right so a lot of news outlets would rather almost have both worlds like let me get it out quick and then maybe tomorrow i'll do the more in-depth look that kind of gives you a sense of the bigger picture mm -hmm. but they have to get it out quick to be able to compete with everyone and get the most eyeballs so you get the most ad clicks right. so i'm sure that you'll see more people as this experiment continues and see how smart it really is more people will also probably try experimenting with it to see if you know what we don't have the money to have someone on the breaking news desk can a robot just give quick alerts right. on text messages headlines so yeah it is a little interesting and a little concerning but, yeah but that's why i guess as journalists we have to really kind of like you know take it deeper you know make it make it more worthwhile for you to click on our stories mm -hmm. record a podcast about it yeah there you go no robots can ever replace a podcast robots right? are in a band have you heard of this like all robot band? yes yes <laughs> there's a video of it on the yeah internet. robots can play guitars. music it's only a matter of time before they have witty banter and go back and forth <laughs> yeah they report on the breakfast specials of the day can you believe this taco bell breakfast <laughs> <laughs> is that your best robot voice do that again i love that can you believe this taco bell breakfast <laughs> Thing too. Come break, on. Break, yeah, breakfast <laughs> syrup. <laughs> syrup does not go with me. <laughs> See, we're gonna have like robot commenters, like asinine commenters too, that report on the robot written article too. Robot flame wars after that. <laughs> oh, I can't wait. Um, no, I really don't. It's funny that you bring that up because people are totally addicted to breaking news. But they're not addicted to the details of the news. You ever get into a conversation with somebody and they're like, oh, did you hear about that earthquake in L.A.? And like, yeah, but then they happened. have no other details about it. Like, you can't have a conversation because that's the extent of their knowledge. Or their the extent news. of the knowledge is the image that came with it, the guy's face. Right. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> like that, uh, that's, that's what I know. Yeah, yeah, that guy's face, right? Yeah, face. Yeah, yeah. crazy. It was a pretty funny face. Though. Yeah, I, I, I enjoyed it. <laughs> I, I'm a big fan of funny faces. Be emotive. Oh, I mean, yeah. you and I both, yeah. definitely. <laughs> All right, last story of the day before we, uh, we cut it. Let's talk about the uncleanliness of the subways. Oh, good. You love this, right? Yes. What is the most disgusting thing that you've seen someone do on the subway? Oh, sweetie. Um, <laughs> is I was, this a lo should I not even be asking this question? No, be I, careful. I, no I haven't seen anything um, crude. Luckily, hmm. I've just seen, um, <laughs> you know, you know, those, there, you know, if you ever visit New York and you haven't been to New York, folks, here's a little advice. You're getting, go on the subway and it's mm. very exciting because it's, you know, it's, it's the the subway novel, yeah. <laughs> and, and you're like, Hey, it's so crowded, but this subway is empty. Oh yeah. I, can't, yeah. I got an empty subway. subway. There is a reason <laughs> yeah. that subway is empty. Yeah. <laughs> it's usually hits you with a smell and yeah. it's probably because mm -hmm. someone yacked in it or worse. Right. So, so yeah, I, th I would say, I would say bodily fluids are, are uh, the worst thing on the subway. Yeah. And then you got to wonder how well they really clean it afterwards. And Never. that, b because folks the next day, I mean, they clean it, but I don't they know. just Febreze it. They don't do anything. I think so. Right. I play a game of uh, don't you know don't touch. Yes. I'm getting better at my surfing skills. Yes. I have fallen on some people with my surfing. Gone wrong. You mean wrong. not touching the pole to breathe? Yes. Yourself. Um. Because or um with winter um I'll just 
put a glove on just to touch the pole. Yeah, I like that. Or um, or I do the the lean, the, yeah. the door lean. Or if if I must, for balance reasons, <laughs> need to touch a pole because it's very crowded. You don't want to yeah. fall onto someone. I do the palm. <laughs> Palm rest. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. so this this part t touches my eyes right, accidentally. Right. You know, um, it's just palm. Yeah. I also open elevators with, with knuckles. Yes, I see that. Elevator too. buttons see that with my too. knuckles. I like people that uh, only put one finger on the pole to brace themselves. You can tell they're super germaphobic <laughs> because they're just like they're just like bracing themselves with <laughs> one finger. It's like this magic finger that they have. But it's true. You should not touch anything. It's so gross to see people like cleaning their ears or scratching the inside of their ears or picking their nose and then they'll just touch the pole well that's why you can't always help it too so i always carry like antibacterial right when i'm done yeah because i know that i'm somehow going to touch something and people or i love which happened to me today the the <laughs> oh i'm so glad i was on your side for that thank right. you i'm like you know like <laughs> like that's that's the worst forget the poles you can help the poles you can't help the people who cough in your face i'm a little passionate about this I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm i would like passionate. to see a study done on what's dirtier, a subway pole or a stripper pole? What has more bacteria? <laughs> Someone should really do this study because mm, I actually science. have no idea. I'm sort of in the middle. Science. I'm going to say a stripper pole is cleaner. Yeah. Because it is a controlled set of people who don't come to work probably when they're like, you know, dying of the flu. <laughs> it's true. And you, at least the, the strippers actually clean the poles before they get on them. Well, yeah. I've heard. <laughs> um, so there's actually a good solution that I'm really, really hoping that will get brought to New York subway stations because this could really revolutionize our hygiene. So uh, a team of Chinese designers, and this is reported on the Discovery site, a team of Chinese designers, they came up with a way to clean the grips that you hold on the subway by itself. The system is called Cycling, and uh, you, see, you can see it right here. It's basically a handle for public transportation vehicles, whether that's a subway or a bus. Does it rotate? That automatically disinfect themselves. Yeah, so what we're looking at here is basically a small rectangular box that hangs down from the pole that you normally grab, right? And the box extends down from that pole, and then a strap hangs down from inside that box. But when you grab the strap, it actually cleans itself by rotating inside the box that contains a sponge and a bunch of disinfecting agents. So that, so, does that make so, sense? So you basically you are touching a moist uh, piece of fabric because it's been moistened by antibacterial right. solution. Right. So every time you pull so down, it I, rotates, and then each person gets a freshly cleaned strap. Hmm. What do you think? Because, I mean, it, it looks like... It doesn't... I mean, after a while, I don't know, the effectiveness after a long time. Yeah. I'm a bigger fan of like just having the subway be empty for one round and like pound it with, with like some sort of you know light that like disinfects everything <laughs> like, like 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 a UV light or something and then like all clear and then you go back in. Your eyeballs just got so wide with that idea. Well, I was thinking about space and like when they when they go into the decontamination units and they go Vroom, and like Isn't that like, bad. And I'm like I'm like oh that'd be so nice. <laughs> I think we should have people who come in and like just give it a wipe down. It just helps the world. Yeah, for sure. Helps the this world. may or may not come, and I'm sure it'll be really expensive. I appreciate too. their their enthusiasm for solving our our. Our giant problems of the world. Yeah. Well, a lot, I know a lot of people in the subway, uh, they sort of link arms with the pole. Yeah, if, so if there's not a lot of the people there, of arm. You, can, uh, you, sort of, you can take a pole, a standing tall pole, if there's not many people there. Yeah. If there's clearly enough, you know, seating and, you know, go ahead, take a pole. When it gets crowded, then you're a little rude. Yeah. These are New York problems for sure. Yeah. But regardless, that's what we have to deal with to live in this beautiful city. Right? Beautiful. <laughs> Springtime, baby. All right, well, Two believe it or not, daisies. we have come to the end of the show, Bridget. Ah. It's been half an hour already. That went by very, very quickly. It was a good show. I appreciate being on. Thank you. Well, I'm glad you're here. And you'll be on tomorrow as well. So we got another half hour with you to go. Okay. Um, that's going to do it for us. The number that you shouldn't be calling is 866-404-CNET <laughs> because unfortunately we still haven't found a way to play audio on the air but we will figure that out in the meantime what you can do is like yes yeah, send a message and yeah. I'll say it in a voice that I think you have <laughs> based on how you write yeah, I like that and and I'll do my my, my, my best yeah. to, to, to say it in your voice I like that it's like podcast theater yeah so send us an email the address is the 404 at cnet.com Bridget will read it in the voice that she thinks you wrote it in or you can tweet us you can also add 
add us on Facebook now. We used to have a Facebook group and then a separate Facebook fan page. So if you were part of the fan page, we're shutting that down. Mm. Go and join the Facebook group. Leave us a comment there. Um, you can maybe have Bridget read that for you if it's good. Yeah. You can also contact us on Reddit. The subreddit is the404.reddit.com. It's a lot of ways to communicate with us. We'll be back tomorrow for another episode. Thanks for tuning in. I'm Justin Yu. I'm Bridget Carey. I'm Ariel Nunez. It's the 404. It's high tech. It's low brow. Thanks for listening.